Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to actually take a look at how we can improve the code that we wrote for our networking. So what we're mainly going to do is look at how we can refactor and discuss ways we can actually improve the networking code within our application. So the first part we're going to start with is changing how we handle building and defining our requests. So let's actually just do this now. In order to actually organize and manage the endpoints that our SwiftUI app interacts with, we're going to actually use enums. So in our API folder, let's create a new file called endpoint cool and then within here we're going to just define an enum now, if you ever use Moya, we're actually going to use this as a source of inspiration to design our networking, you know, implementation. Cool. So now that we have our enum endpoint here, essentially what's going to live inside of this enum is the cases that we use to interact with the different endpoints within our app. So currently right now, there's actually three so there's a people endpoint that we use to actually fetch our people. There's a user detail endpoint that we use to fetch, you know, users details for a specific person. And there's also a submit endpoint that we're going to have for actually submitting some kind of like information to create a new user. So let's actually define this now. So as you can see for our people, detail and create. So you can see for our detail, we actually have an associated value for this case. And the reason why is because if you actually look at the endpoint, we actually have to pass in an ID within the path, which is why we need to pass in the ID via the associated value. So now we've done that, we need to actually manage our APIs, base URLs and the paths for each one of these cases. So let's actually create an extension on our endpoint to see this in action. Cool. So what this will allow us to do is we can now define the individual host and the individual paths that we want for each one of these cases within our enum. So we can literally have the entire implementation of our API within this file. So it's easy for us to read and manage as well. What we need to do now is actually fill out these two computed properties with the implementations that we want for each case path. If you want to learn more about the difference between, you know, the base, the base host and paths, then you should check out my video within the existing course that we're working on now, the SwiftUI take home course. And there's a video called what is an API. So I'm actually going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So what we said here is that for our host, it's always going to be the request.in part of the URL because we're not changing the host depending on what enum case that we want. But for our path, one for you'll realize is that we actually have different paths here that we're going to actually manage for each case. So for our people path, you can see here that we've actually defined it's going to be slash API slash users. And for our detail, you can see that we're doing what I said before, where we have the path, but at the end, we put the ID within the string. And as you can see for our create, we also have the same path here for our people. Now to actually clean this up and actually reduce the amount of code that we currently have for each one of our cases, what we could do is to simply combine the people and the create because they're both the same. So let's do that now. So after here, we're just going to put in a comma and I'm just going to say dot create. And then now we can simply just re remove this here. So now our people and our create will use the same path when we're trying to access the API. Cool. So now that we've done that, we actually now need to build our URL from this definition and we're going to be using the URL components class within Swift to build this URL. So first of all, let's actually create another extension which will actually give us the URL when we try to access one of our cases. 
So within this URL computer property, you can see that I've actually marked it as optional. And that's just in case we actually want to, you know, it fails and we just return an empty URL. So within here, what we need to do is create an instance of our URL components. Now the whole purpose of why we're using the URL components is because it allows us to actually break down specifically which part of the URL that we actually want to set. So this gives us an extra benefit. So let's just say here, bar, and then we're gonna say URL components is equal to URL components like so, cool. And then now, like I said before, we're able to actually specify each bit of the URL that we want to set. So the first one we're going to set is a scheme. And what the scheme is, is whether the URL should be either HTTP or HTTPS. Now for us with the API that we're interacting with, it is HTTPS. So we're going to set that here. Cool. Now the next thing we're going to set is the host. And we're just going to use the computed property value that we have here, host, within our URL components, like so. And then we're going to set the path. And similar to our host, we're going to set the path here as well. Cool. And then the next thing that you'll realize is that if we actually just go into our view model for one of them, you'll see that we actually have this query parameter here where we actually add in our own delay. So we actually don't need to specify this within the URL path anymore. We can actually declare this within the URL components as a query item. So let's actually just do this now. So in order to do that, we just need to say URL components dot query item and then this takes an array of URL query items. So we're going to say URL query item, and then we're just going to give it a name. So the name is the key. So the key in our case, if we look at our detail view model again, is delay. And the value here is the value after the equal sign. So for our case, the key here, name, is going to be delay. And then the value we're going to say here is going to be reduced. We're going to reduce this from three to make it a bit quicker is one. Now, one thing to note is that we don't want this to be here all the time. We're only adding in this delay for debugging purposes. So what we're actually able to do is actually specify that we only want to add this in if the build is running in a debug mode. Now, in order to do this, we can use something called a macro preprocessor. So in order to do that, you should say hash and then if debug, and then close it off with an end if. So what's going to happen here is that if your application is running in debug mode, it's going to add in the code within this block here. So when we actually release this app onto the app store, we're not going to have in this additional delay that we use to debug. So the final thing we need to do is just return the URL from our URL components. Sweet. So now this is going to basically give us the URL that we've actually built using our URL components. Cool. Now that we have this in place, before we actually refactor our networking manager, you'll see that when we actually, you know, submit some data, we actually need to pass some data through because we're actually now building the URL here. We actually don't specify the method type that we want to use in the request. So what we want to do is actually handle the method type within the endpoint here so you can specify whether a case is a GET request or a POST request where you send some possible data. So in our networking manager file, what we want to do is move our method type from here into our endpoint file like so. Cool. So now we need to change the extension from networking manager to be endpoint. And then we also need to use this within our endpoint. So depending on the case that you're working with, you can specify what type of request you want this to be. So first of all, let's just add this in. So we're going to create a new computer property called method type. And it's going to be of type method type like so. And then we're going to just type out a switch statement on self. Cool. 
So our people and our detail are both get requests. So we can actually combine these two into one case like so. And we actually don't need the associated value because we're just simply saying that this is a get request. So we can just say return and then get. But our create is a bit different. So with our create, we actually do pass some data into the object so we can actually associate this data with the request that you're about to send. What we essentially need to do is we need to actually pass this data from our create case into our post data here. Now we're not able to do that right now because it doesn't have an associated value, but let's actually just add this in now. We'll just call this submission data and it'll just be data. And now what we need to do is that within our method type here for our create, we need to say let data, and then we want to return the post with some data. So we can actually access this from anywhere if we want to access the method type. So now we're able to actually nicely pass through the type of request it's going to be and the data. And we're now going to use this within our networking manager suite. So now we're in a place where we can actually refactor our networking manager. Go into our networking manager. And I'm just gonna close all the other tabs. And then the first thing we wanna do is we need to refactor the function here. So we actually don't need this method type and absolute URL anymore. So we can actually take both of these out. And instead, we just want to basically allow you to pass in an endpoint. So this endpoint is what we're essentially going to use so that you can basically you know declare that you want this to be this type of request so we're going to get a couple of errors here and the reason why that is because we're now using the endpoint enum and we've removed some properties from within our function but all we need to do now is to simply remove this url here and replace it with endpoint dot url so now we're able to access the url on the endpoint and then when our build request function, our method type doesn't exist anymore. So all we simply need to do here is just say endpoint dot method type. And now you'll see that all of the errors have now gone away well within this, well within this function. So the next thing we need to do is actually update the function below to be the exact same. So let's just remove these two. And then we'll just say underscore endpoint. And then endpoint and then we'll replace this with endpoint dot url and then again just replace the method type with endpoint dot method type so now if you scroll down to the bottom you should see that it doesn't have a method type in scope and that's because it doesn't live within this file anymore so in order to fix this error we just need to say endpoint dot method type so you can access the type from within the endpoint enum call so we've not fixed all the errors within our project because we now need to specify what type of request we want to send within each one of our view models. So let's actually start off with our people view model. And then now we don't need to do this anymore and we'll get an error. So instead of doing this, all we simply need to say here is dot people because we want the people view model to use the people endpoint case to make a request. And then let's go into our detail view model. And then we'll simply replace this with dot detail. But as you can see, it actually takes in some kind of ID. So the ID that we want to pass in here is the ID that we pass through the function, like so. Cool. And then finally, our create view model. And then we don't need this. So we just need to say dot create submission data. And the submission data that we're going to use here is this data property here, like so. Cool. So when you build the project now, you should see that it's fully built and it's all succeeded. So now to actually test this out, let's run this on the simulator. And now you should see that it fetches the data fine. When we click on someone, it fetches their information fine. And if we submit some data, you'll see that the submission works great. So we've actually now successfully refactored our code into a single endpoint file. So we can just look at this file to see the definition of our API within our Swift UI app. And in order to actually simply just access and use these endpoints, we just simply just say 
networking manager dot the case type. So this is a lot more clean and easily scalable as well. Because if we want to add new cases and whatnot, just edit this file here. Sweet. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you in a bit. Deuces.